Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Dr. Vimal Raj uh, from the southern part of India. I'm a consultant cardiothoracic radiologist and the head of the department of Narayana Health Bangalore. Thank you very much for joining this very important webinar on the hot topic of COVID-19 and imaging. I happen to be a radiologist who's got special interest in cardiac and chest imaging and have been working closely towards COVID imaging related changes and how things are going to be changing in our life because of that. So today the idea is for me to speak for about 35 minutes and then we'll open this forum for questions and answers and I will try and answer some of the questions that people have and we'll discuss some of the burning topics in relation to the imaging of COVID-19. The issue of uh, CT is what we're going to focus on. We are not going to talk about chest radiograph on this presentation. I would be happy for people to just ask any questions as the presentation is going along. Just type in your questions at the bottom of the screen and it'll come to me and I'll handle these questions at the end of the presentations. So the objectives for today are what is the role of CT in COVID-19? We will discuss some of the guidelines which have come out on the use of CT in COVID-19. We'll also talk about radiology department preparedness. Are you prepared? What are you doing to be prepared for the disease, whether it's a patient who's got suspected COVID or a patient who's got proven COVID? What should we be doing? And in the end, I think this is one of the very important topics that a lot of people have been asking. Can CT be used for screening? Is it a test which we can reliably use to screen patients or not? We'll discuss that also. Now, let me be very honest about it, okay? This is a dynamic situation. As of now, in India, we are nearly reaching 19,000 proven cases of COVID-19. And this is changing by the hour and by the minute. So the evidence which is available today relating to COVID-19 and imaging is exactly same. The evidence that we've been looking at has been changing. There have been papers which have been telling us something and then suddenly there is another paper which is contradicting what is happening. The RT-PCR testing, the swab test, is available at places and is not available at places. So for example, in some of the institutes, if they send a swab, it is taking up to two days for them to get a report, while in other places, it is only a couple of hours that is taking to get the report. So this will also have an impact on whether CT may play an important role or not. Antibody testing is on the verge of becoming very widely available. It is available at some centers, but again, is that good enough or not, we will discuss. And at the end of the day, like with any other writer, this is my personal opinion with quotation of whatever literature is available, and I have tried to be as unbiased as possible in this regard. Screening. So I'm going to talk about this for the next 10 minutes and see if we can get into any consensus. Initially, these big papers came out, okay, towards the March and April. A lot of them came from uh, China, some of them came from Korea, and they all led us to believe that CT had a higher sensitivity compared to RT-PCR. Also, we came across very good evidence which showed that the RT-PCR had a sensitivity of around 69%, or less than 70%, which basically meant we had to do two tests before we can call anybody negative. And it is not available that easily in a lot of parts of the country, and the time taken for it was also very long. All of this put together led to a lot of uh, publications in the social media, in the print media, saying that CT is perhaps the messiah, and CT can be used for screening, of patients and you know the RT-PCR uh, can be improved by putting CT together. But in the background there were also papers, one which came out of the Diamond Princess uh, cruise ship experience which showed that 
in asymptomatic patients. 46% of asymptomatic patients had normal CT, although they were positive in the RT-PCR test. Another paper which came, it said that 56% of symptomatic patients had normal CT at the time of presentation. Some of them changed into having a abnormal CT over a period of time, but 46% asymptomatic, 56% symptomatic had normal CT. These publications kind of got not that well publicized or got hidden in the literature with not many people paying attention to that. Also, some of the papers which really actually said, yes, CT should be used, is one such paper where they said, compared to RT-PCR, CT is great. And they said, these are cases of positive CT. Well, this could be any infection. Fair enough, you can still call it COVID-19, but hang on. This is a patient. Would you call this as positive for COVID if you're doing a screening test? This is a different patient who just had these two abnormalities. And these were called as positive for COVID, improving the CT's efficiencies. I would struggle to call these patients as positive for COVID with any certainty in my normal practice. So that leads us to really question, is CT that good? Now, there are two arguments, okay? One argument which says that CT should not be used for screening because you can spread infection. You're bringing in patient to the CT scanner, that whole department, that scanner, and the next patient can have infection. Well, this got refuted by this paper in China where they had a fever clinic where they looked at 3,000 plus patients over a period of time and none of their staff, none of their staff developed COVID positivity during that period, saying that infection control if taken seriously, can be achieved. So the argument that infection will spread may not be necessarily true. Expensive test, yes, CT can be expensive. Of course, CT cannot differentiate from other pathologies, so we should not use it. And we've seen that it may still be negative in some cases. So why would you use it? On the other hand, people started saying, hey, we should use it because, you know, in many cases, it is safer than swab. Because to get a true positive result for swab, you have to have a very deep throat swab taking, which leads to a gag reflex and people may sneeze out and spreading the virus more to the healthcare workers. CT is much faster, okay? And papers have shown that it has got good sensitivity. With low-dose protocols, radiation should not be a major problem. And false negative PCR is much worse than having a false positive CT. You do not want any false negative patients. This led to two big meta-analysis. Well, the top one was a bigger meta-analysis. The second one was just a critical review of uh, some of the available evidence which supported for CT. So these authors looked at it. This paper, the meta-analysis got together, looked at multiple publications from January to March 16, and diluted down to 68 papers. And what they found was that CT had a sensitivity of 94%, a pooled sensitivity, all put together, while RT-PCR had a sensitivity of around 89%. CT specificity was as low as 37%, while the specificity of, you know, the RT-PCR is much higher, 99.99% in that manner with the negative predictive value. So when they deep dived into this, this is something very, very important. They looked at the positive predictive value of CT in different parts of the world, and they looked at the prevalence of disease. And what they found was, in areas where the disease prevalence is low, CT did not do that well. Whereas in countries like China, where the disease prevalence was much higher, at that point in time, CT was doing a decent job in screening of these patients. So to put together, it has high sensitivity, but poor specificity and prevalence of disease does matter. 
lower prevalent areas CT was not that good, higher prevalent areas it was very good. Younger patients or asymptomatic patients, CT can be abnormal, can show normal results even if the RT-PCR was positive. Now, when you compare it with what a screening test should be, a screening test should be something which has good sensitivity and specificity. It causes little morbidity. It has to be affordable and available. So now, let's try and summarize all of this. Now, this is my personal opinion, okay? Can CT be used for screening? Well, in isolation, without RT-PCR testing, no way. I don't think anyone would justify that. So it has to be taken in conjunction with RT-PCR. Symptomatic versus asymptomatic patient, there is a big difference. Symptomatic patient, there is some justification of using CT in doing screening, especially if they have got moderate to severe symptoms. Mild symptoms, you may be able to just push the boundaries a little bit there. Taking the example of fever clinics in China, where they scanned huge number of patients and CT was part of their protocol and it helped them. There are specific scenarios where RT-PCR plus CT can be used in asymptomatic patients, especially if you look at our country and our scenario now, the prevalence will change. I believe it's going to become much more before it starts to get better. The requirements will change. What do you do if a patient comes in with abdominal pain, acute abdominal pain, and needs an acute surgery. RTs PCR test is, let's say, negative. You're lucky enough to have it with the result available in the next two hours. Are you going to be happy to take that patient up for surgery? Or would you just put a CT scan at the same time when you're looking at the abdomen, cover the chest also? A patient comes in with stroke, and you don't know their background history. You don't know their exposure especially when community spread phase comes and you really cannot predict whether that patient is exposed or not. Is there not a role of doing CT in that specific scenario? Also, one of the corollaries which I think is, you know, the coronary artery disease. One of the beauties of CT calcium scores or CT coronary angiography in detecting or screening for coronary artery disease is its high negative predictive value. Would you not use the same corollary and say people who are worried, people who have got some specific or non-specific symptoms to offer them CT as part of non-guideline approach, but in terms of individuals asking for it. But in reality, the scenario I suspect, which is what we are looking forward to, is each institute will have its own different set of cases own different set of policies and own different set of experiences. We are uh, awaiting the RT-PCR test to be delivered to our institute, which will be followed by the availability of the antibody test. And for the first few patients, we would like to do all of these tests and then try to come up with a better solution, which is fitting for us, but may not fit for somebody else. So what happened in China with the degree of prevalence CT may not be great for us, or the other way, CT may be much better for us, but we do not know at this stage. In summary, CT has a well-described pattern in COVID. Bilateral, peripheral, ground glass areas with consolidation is the pattern that has been very well described. Differentiating COVID CT with other pathologies, I'm not so sure. Okay, I'm not so sure. When the disease prevalence increases, yes, we will be very good, but we do happen to be fortunate in, this, in the point that this is not the greatest time for flu. We don't see that many cases of flu in our normal practice for CT, so we may still be able to differentiate it. Radiology departments need to be prepared irrespective of what is your personal opinion, whether you want to be doing CT screening or not, one has to be prepared because these patients will come not for chest CT, but some other examination whereby we need to protect ourselves and our staff and make sure the disease isn't spread. CT has a high negative predictive value and sensitivity, 
that the specificity is poor. Fleischner Society guidelines are realistic and very good and I would take that with uh, as the most important guidelines in the current scenario. Individual departments will change, individual countries will take different approach.